Good morning, students. Today, I am going to take up a very important and significant continent, and that is Asia. It becomes very important for us, not only that it is the largest continent on the earth, but it is the continent where we are staying. That is, India is a part of the continent of Asia. So, that adds to the significance of the continent of Asia. Today, I'm going to give you a brief introduction about the continent. And in the later parts of the month, we will be learning more in detail about Asia. So, let us go. Now, when you look at the map of the world, you find that Asia occupies a very large area of the land. And that is to the tune of nearly 30% of the land which the earth has. So, all these continents, that is Europe, North America, South America, Africa and Australia together makes 70% of the land by Asia alone is occupying 30% of the land area of the earth. Don't you think that it is a very large continent? So, not only Asia is the largest continent, it is also a continent of contrast. It is a continent where there is a great diversity. And this diversity of the continent is seen in its physical features, climate, vegetation, wildlife and its people. So as far as its physical features are concerned, Asia has got the highest mountain and the lowest seas. It has got the hottest place and also the coldest place. Vegetation includes from lush green luxuriant vegetation of the rainforest to the sandy deserts which is deprived of any type of vegetation except for cactus and shrubs and bushes. Wildlife is very rich. That is, it, it is having polar bears which is living in the cold tundra to the orangutans which are living in the rich rainforest. And its people are having diverse culture and they also practice different religions. Practically all religions in the world have originated from Asia. So the people not only have a diverse practice, practice of religion, but they are also having different types of culture. So let us now see how Asia is a land of contrast. Here you can see the highest mountain, that is Mount Everest, while the lowest place on, on the earth, that is nearly 400 meters below the earth, and that is the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea has got a large amount of salt because it lies in a region where there is very high rate of evaporation. So even if you do not know how to swim, you can actually float in this Dead Sea. The Dead Sea, as it is named, is a sea which does not have any life because of the huge amount of salt which is found in this sea. In the north, we have the frozen tundra, which does not have 
any vegetation whatsoever except for some flowering plants in its periphery. While the dense rainforest has got a huge amount of biodiversity and covers most of southeastern Asia. Elsewhere, we find vast extensive deserts in Central and Southwestern Asia, where as long as your eyes can see, you can only see dunes of sand with scattered vegetation of xerophytes, which mainly includes cactus and bushes and shrubs. Wildlife is very rich. Different kinds of animals like bears, elephants, the magnificent tigers, the endangered panda are all found in Asia. And not only animals, there are different types of insects, reptiles and several colorful birds are found in Asia which makes its wildlife very, very rich. Now, if you look at the map of Asia, Asia together with Europe is known as Eurasia. And it covers nearly three-fourth part of Eurasia. That is, a large part of Eurasia is occupied by Asia. Asia and Europe is separated by the Ural Mountains over here that is found at around 60 degree <coughs> north, uh, 60 degree longitude. And the Ural River, which originates from the Ural Mountains. The Caspian Sea, another important demarcation and a natural boundary which is found between Asia and Europe. Here between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, we have the Caucasus Mountain and the Black Sea. So all these five natural boundaries separate Europe from Asia, namely the Ural Mountains, the Ural River, Caspian Sea, Caucasus Mountain and the Black Sea are separating Europe from Asia. Europe is, sorry, Asia is surrounded by the Arctic Ocean in the north, the Pacific Ocean in the east and Indian Ocean in the south. Asia is separated from the continent of Africa by the Red Sea. And in the western part, southwestern part of Asia, we find the Mediterranean Sea. The Bering Strait over here separates Asia from North America. The Swiss Canal, which is a man-made canal, separates Asia from Egypt. Here we have Egypt and here we have the Swiss Canal, which connects the Mediterranean Sea with the Red Sea. Besides this, there are several seas and bays. Most important being the Arabian Sea, the Bay of Bengal, the South China Sea, over which China keeps claiming of having its own, not allowing these countries to have access to South China Sea. Here we have the Yellow Sea, East China Sea, the Sea of Japan, 
see of Okotas and the bearings. So these are the big and small seas and gulfs which are found around Asia. Now as far as the extent of Asia is concerned, it extends from 10 degree south latitude to 80 degree north. That means it extends from beyond the equator that is, here we have the equator and Asia extends from the southern part of equator to the northern part. That is 80 degree north latitude in the northern hemisphere and 10 degree south in the southern hemisphere. So it extends for nearly 90 degrees of latitude. No wonder it has got so many different types of climates. Longitudinally, it extends from 26 degree east to 170 degree west. So, it covers a very large distance longitudinally as well as latitudinally. Now, Asia has got several big and small countries. If we spare this country of Russia, which is also found in both the continents, that is, Russia extends both in Europe and Asia. So, if we spare this, China is the largest continent, sorry, country in the continent. In the West, we have countries like Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran, Yemen, Oman, Lebanon, Syria, Jordan. And these countries are found around the Persian Gulf. That is why they are known as the Gulf countries. These countries are also very important because most of these countries are very famous oil producing nations. Central part of Asia includes Kazakhstan which is found both in Asia and Europe. Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan and Turkmenistan. Now these countries once upon a time, were part of the Russian Federation. But now, they are independent nations. In the southeast, we have India, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, Malaysia and Indonesia. So, these countries form the southeastern part of the continent of Asia. Besides this, in the east, we have the Philippines, Taiwan, Japan, China, North and South Korea. So, these countries are the eastern countries of Asia. In the central part, we have Mongolia, which is a buffer country between Russia and China. Several other small countries like Georgia, Armenia are found to be part of Europe. Armenia, though it is completely in Asia, but it is included in Europe. So these are some of the countries of Asia. There are several big and small islands which includes the Maldives which are 
scattered islands in the Indian Ocean. Lakshadweep, part it is a part of India. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands, again, it is they are part of India. And in the southeastern part, you can see several islands which belong to Indonesia, Celebes, and Malaysia. Here we have Singapore in the at the tip of Malaysia, which is one of the most important and developed nation of Asia. Besides this, there are several other islands in Eastern Asia, which includes parts of Japan, which includes Hokkaido, Honshu, Shikoku, and Kyushu, Taiwan, the islands over here. All these are known as the archipelago because they are a group of islands. So now we have got a brief introduction about Asia and I hope I have made myself very clear as to what are the topics which you are going to learn in this particular chapter. So that is what we have enough time for today. Thank you.